Well, good morning. Good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. We're here back on our 1867, um, I guess it's a Victorian home, that we are redoing the bathroom. Uh, this is day number four. We had to go through and get rid of a cast iron bathtub. Um, interesting, interesting piece here. Let me put you on here. I had a person, the old cast iron bathtubs, they watched the video where I literally took it apart or took a ax and broke it in half. And they said, you know, that's, that, that, that's the hard way to do it. You should have just taken a sawzall and cut the corners of it. Um, let me explain something. See, now you can do that with a modern day tub like this. This one actually is a thick walled one. This one is probably 3 16th of an inch thick. The bathtub that we took out was half inch cast iron. If you ever tried to cut a cast iron um, sewer line, they don't cut, they don't cut. You actually have what's known as a pipe cracker and it has little rings that are in the middle of it and a chain that wraps it up and you basically squeeze it and it cracks. Cast iron is actually brittle. Um, so they said you could use an angle grinder. Well, an angle grinder, you would go through a lot of blades. They said, you know, you would destroy literally a sawzall trying to do that. I took an ax to this, I shattered it in all of about 20 minutes and was able to take it out in parts. Um, but, you know, again, I've, I've been through this before. I've tried cutting before with an angle grinder. If you try it with a sawzall, you will be sitting here literally for hours trying to cut through it. It just doesn't work. Taking, if you can't, and, and this is where it's even funnier because the bathtub itself was free on the floor. You could move it if you're strong enough too, but the sheer weight of it is just too much to be able to do. And that's why we ended up basically cracking it because we got to take it down um, 15 steps because the ceiling's being that much taller and then across the front porch. That was the easiest way, believe it or not, to get it out. But now that we have our surround and stuff done, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna block the drywall compound um, and the ceiling and things, and then I'm gonna start doing the wall tile. The wall tile should actually go through and be pretty easy to do because we did take our time to make sure that our um, go board is square in the corners. That's where we shimmed out the walls so that way that the board would be able to go all the way down. And the nice thing about this go board, it's lightweight, it's waterproof, and um, it won't breed mold and things in there. So it being all the way down in there, it's like a resin, won't absorb the moisture. So this is a great, great product. So now it's a matter of going through here and doing the tile. But definitely a major improvement from three days ago. The homeowner, she's happy. She's already stood in the bathtub. And uh, it's like, ooh, looks like the extra headroom in there. Nice. Okay. All right, let's get to work. I'm gonna take the rest of this floor up here, get the truck loaded with debris, and I'm gonna take it. <laughs> Boy, it, it ain't cheap around here to take trash to Harrisburg. It's a board of minimum of $45 a load. That's if you got one bag even. It's a minimum. Minimum! And I thought it was high at home. All right, so we are about ready to start putting down our tile. And I've got my tile cutter over here and my base. Having this base right here makes life a lot easier than having it on the floor. And this is an oversized um, tile cutter that I actually bought from uh, Floor and Decor. And this is like a professional grade. It's great when you're dealing with these big tiles like this because you can get the 24 inch ones in there if we need to cut like little slivers. I've cut these 24 ones, three quarters of an inch strips off of this thing. So it's really, really good at score cutting. I do have my wet saw outside um, along with an angle grinder. More times than not, I will end up using the angle grinder uh, for doing more of my cuts and stuff like that. With the exception of maybe like, you know, when you, you get ones like around the tub that we have to do. Sometimes it's easier having the wet saw than the grinder. You don't get as much dust. Now, since we're using 24 by 12s, they're real big tiles. So what we've done is 
This is my level center line right here. The whole shower enclosure is about 59 inches. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out here with a full tile each way, and we'll do a cut one at each corner. This way, if it ends up being that your walls are off, and if you start with one and say, hmm, I'm gonna keep it easy. I'm gonna start here with one that's a solid one. If there's any variance in your walls, then you could have a problem where you might have a little gap over here, and now you gotta cut a little sliver. This way, starting this way, you always cut the piece that goes on the end, but you can cut it so it's really nice and tight. One other thing that you wanna make sure that you do, or at least that I do, um, and it's recommended with the go board, when you put in the go board, is put a bead of silicone adhesive, silicone, you know, uh, caulky adhesive, in between the joints so that way it seals it up. So we've gone through, and all of our joints and the corners, I've gone through and silicone those as well, as well as the bottom edge of where the toilet meets the floor. You always do that with the tile, of course, after the fact. But putting that silicone, and use a good grit. Don't go for the cheap one. You know, it's going to cost you about $10, $12 for a good mold-resistant um, caulking adhesive. You want to use a good one because this is going between the tub and the tile. And this is just like an extra layer of protection that if the tub, you're getting out, you're wet, and the water runs up in there, you've got the caulk on the top, which is easy to change. But even if that ends up... Uh, becoming delaminated, you still have another layer of protection. And this is one of those things that people won't see that, you know? Um, the same thing with the corners of stuff, putting in there. It costs a little bit more time and a little bit more money, but longevity-wise, it will make a big difference on how long this thing goes and making sure there's no problems in the future. I built um, my shower at my house uh, 20 years ago. 20 years ago, believe it or not, and built the pan for it and did the same kind of stuff back then, although they didn't have the go board back then. But I bought myself a really good shower device, a Delta. It did cost me a pretty penny, but after 20 years, I'd say I got my money's worth out of it. So I'm going to go mix up some mortar. I've got my tiles, some right here ready to go. And we're going to do the back wall and we're going to go up. Now, one other thing, too. With these, I'm trying something new today. And these are spacers. And I don't typically use spacers, but because we're doing these vertical heavy tiles, oh no, these aren't, these aren't, the she bought these, I don't want those. Uh, these, this is something new I'm trying. These spacers, eighth inch spacers, go in there. And what you're supposed to be able to do with this is you've got a tightener piece that you can tighten up these um, and then be able to pop them out later. So that way you've got the eighth inch. And because these are big, heavy tiles, the weight of these are going to sink. And so that's where you need these spacers to keep them in place. And it also has, in case, and this is a problem sometimes you have with big tiles, these are little knobs that you can use to tighten up onto the tile to level it out. So that way if one's in a little bit, cause sometimes usually you're trying to take the trowel and trying to bend it back out and stuff, you'll be able to pull it back out even with the other one. That's the idea and we'll find out.
All right, so I've been working on getting these in here. I'm using these spacers and um, they are very helpful with these big tiles. They'll pull them uh, straight and stuff in here. And you can see we've got our center line down through there and we're working on getting these on up in here. It's very labor intense stepping in and out of the tub, but I think it's gonna look really, really good. You can see how nice and straight the corners are in here, which makes life a lot easier. Whew. Getting there. All right, so I'm gonna call it a day here. Now, the blue spots that you see, those are not staying. Those are just basically, they're, they're like uh, nuts to help pull the tiles flat. And that's what we've done. So we're almost finished on this side. We just have this side left to go. But I am gonna call it a day because I am whooped right now. But I feel good about how much we got started. You can see how the corners come together real nicely like that with the half pieces cut both in the corners and the fuller ones. I think it's a good effect. The homeowner is happy. We got them real close to the top. We'll end up caulking the top up in there. Um, it'll be a nice reveal. We'll have the new light fixture in there. My drywall uh, second coat is almost dry, so I can finish blocking this tomorrow, and that'll be ready to paint, and we'll start working on the floor tomorrow, so not bad, not bad looking at all. All right, peace out, good people.